Hey, hello, and welcome to this really fun tutorial by Flow Motion. Because today we are going to jump onto a car, so just follow us into After Effects. As you have seen, today's tutorial is super special because before even starting, I had to pack all my stuff and drive to Belgium to meet the guys from Cinecom.net. And if you don't know them, for what reason should you not know them? Anyways, if you have not subscribed to them, you have the next 20 minutes of this tutorial time to do so. And the link is of course in the video description. And if you are super fast, you can even consider subscribing to my channel. So I personally always wanted to do a crazy shot like that and had a lot of ideas already in mind, as well as some tests that I've done. So one day me and Jordi were on a call and had the idea to get this finally going. And honestly, this is super easy. We will simply set up a green screen outside of their office. Hello? Hello? Hey Flo, oh, you know, Jordi. we just had a discussion and we were thinking, can this be done a little bit more easier, like without a green screen? Of course, I wanted to do it without a green screen anyways. <laughs> So a simple way to do it is to film two different shots and we can hide the complicated stuff with a cut. <laughs> yes? Oh, oh, I forgot to mention, like, is it possible to do this in one take? I mean, that would be really impressive. For sure. Why not? Indeed, that is what I had in mind. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is to tell Jordi to lay flat on his car. We will not get a real impact, of course, but maybe we can hide that behind some sound effects. <laughs> yes? Sorry, one last thing, Flo. Do you even mind that there should be some kind of a perspective change? Because I can not just lay flat on the car. I need to, like, kind of fall from the sky. Okay, breathe in, breathe out. That should still be totally doable, and to be honest, their studio is only about six to eight meters high, so the perspective change will hardly be visible and he will only be falling down for about five frames anyways. Easy. <laughs> yes? Hey Flo, sorry, one last time. I was just thinking our building is kind of small. Can you make it like higher, like, like 20 meters or something? Thank you. Challenge accepted. Let us start with creating a list for our shooting day, so we don't miss anything. Of course we need a shot with Jordi pretending to fall on his car. And we need a shot of the car with the windows down. And with the windows up. I want to have the windows to break and from then on they are gone. So the easiest way to do this is to have them down throughout the shot and digitally replace them only for the few frames in the beginning where he's not touching the car. And of course we also need a clean plate. Just a background. No Jordi, no car. And remember that we said we want to make it as simple as possible? So therefore I'm planning on not doing a camera move, but doing the whole camera work in post-production. So for that we also need to take some pictures of the sky and the studio to get that done. Hey, and we need something to toast with when we are done shooting. So how do we do that? How can we fake the perspective in the shot? Hmm, let's have a look. Two things are important. Your degree from the University of Trial and Error and your best friend. Pre-production. So here I have done some storyboarding and animation to solve some issues early on in the process. You see, the higher the jump, the more you will have to tilt your camera up and the more you see the character's chest and the closer he comes to the car, the more we look straight down onto the character. So when I'm disabling the background and only have a look at the character, you see that it looks like he's kneeling down in front of the camera. So that's exactly what we need to shoot to get it done. So what about the camera movement? We want the camera move to end straight on the car and wall. So perfectly in level, because this helps adding in shattering glass, adding a post shake to the car and extending the building without dealing with any perspective issues. If your camera is totally straight, the horizon is absolutely in the middle of the frame. 
An easy way to find the horizon is to watch out for assets in the shot. Because if you look flat onto something, well, there's your horizon. If you have the camera straight in level and move the camera up or down, the horizon will still always be in the exact middle of your shot, even at a few hundred meters high. Well, even if you place your camera at the highest building of the world or on Mount Everest or even on the moon, the horizon stays in the middle. And if you need more of those cool compositing tricks, check out this video here where I share my top five tips and tricks. So why is that important? Hmm. This is important because we have the camera straight for easy compositing and Jordi's car is pretty high. So we use a camera height so that we can adjust how much we see from the rooftop, which is perfect because now we can easily place a mattress on there. So everything is super safe for the car. <laughs> Let's go through our list and film Jordi doing the kneel down pretending to see shot. And remember, we do that with the windows down. Next, let's bring the windows up and let it roll for a few seconds. And last but not least, we remove the car and get our clean plate. Hey, and now we can finally touch the camera again and tilt it up, still with nothing in the shot. And in your software of choice, you can now take some still images of this tilt. And let's fire up Photoshop to create a huge clean plate panorama out of this. So go to File, Automate, Photo Merge, click on Browse and open up your images. Now you have different methods to choose from to create a merged photo and you can choose the option that works best for you. So click on OK and we are almost there. Now let's extend the building height. And we can do that in Photoshop and in After Effects, wherever you feel more comfortable. Let me quickly show you my workflow in both programs. So in Photoshop, let's mask out one floor of the building. Then we roughly position it on top, go to edit, perspective warp. And as it says, let's warp it into the right perspective. Therefore align the perspective in layout mode. And when you have done that, you can switch to warp mode and adjust everything to your needs. Hey, and simply do that for each floor. In After Effects is the same method. Mask out the building and then warp it into perspective. So an easy way to do it here is to pre-comp the masked out building and make it as big as the composition. And now you can simply use the power pin tool to work on the perspective. So time to bring out our hero shot. And we simply position it in the exact same spot as it needs to be. Hey, and to line it up perfectly, you can switch to the difference blending mode. Now you have a visual indicator of what you're doing. Now let's cut out Jordi. For that, I'm using the Roto brush tool and you can only use that in layer mode. So simply double click on the layer to get there. Now with the tool selected, you can paint on parts that you want to Roto. And if something goes wrong, you can hold down the Alt button, therefore get a red stroke and can erase stuff again. And for finer detail around the hair, you can use the Refine Edge tool and simply go through the frames one by one for the best result. Once we are happy, we need to freeze the effect. That means After Effects will use all strokes we have created and bake them into the effect. So we can have some fun with it without recalculating each frame. And now you can also play with the effect settings. Okay. Now we have the falling Jordi on a separate layer and with only two position and scale keyframes, we should be able to have Jordi falling down and you can also try to speed up your footage if necessary. And you can do that by holding down the alt button while dragging in or expanding the layer. Try to easy ease the beginning keyframe in that way he gets bigger and faster the closer he comes to the ground, you know, gravity. And you can really fine tweak that in the graph editor over here. So try to separate the dimensions because as he is only falling down. So let's only concentrate on that. And if you want to learn more about real world physics and after effects, you may want to have a look at this video here. Okay. I think we're on the right track. Time to also quickly roto out the car. Hmm. Wait, I forgot the wheels. No. I did that on purpose because now I can animate an impact with the car body. 
You see, when I place the anchor point from the car over here with the Y key, I can now rotate it with the R key and it will look like there is actually an impact going on. And for the wheels we do not have to be precise because we can keep the actual floor. Hey, and what really helps here is to already create our camera move and not in the end because with that we also define the final look and feel and timing. So let's create a new composition in our final comp size. So for me this is 1920 by 1080 full HD. So set position keyframes and now I simply try to have Jordi within the frame while he slams down. Like a real camera operator would do. Wowie, we are getting somewhere. Now the devil is in the details. So let us add the windows back in and as soon as we get the impact let's replace them with some shattering glass footage. Hey and now is maybe the best time to tell you how to get cool footage elements for that. My go to place for that is Envato elements. Here you find all you need from shattering glass elements to smoke and dust. You want to have some more crazy destruction on your car? Hey they have you covered. Also the sound effects I will add to the video are from them. And if you're searching for fitting assets, fitting perspective and in my perfect world already with an alpha channel then you should definitely check out the 3D section. Here you can choose the perspective that fits your project and download exactly that. Not only for the car part but everything you wish for. And I have a link for you in the video description that will give you 70% discount on the checkout for your first month. Hey, so try it out and you can keep everything you have downloaded in that test month. And all licenses are yours for a lifetime. Even after you have ended your subscription. <coughs> so, I added in some of their pre-keyed glass as well as some smoke parts. and sound. Okay, so looking pretty good so far. Let's now only concentrate on one last thing. Some more destruction to Jordi's <gasps> car. <laughs> and for that I'm simply going to animate it with the puppet tool. Therefore let's pre-comp Jordi and the car so that the puppet tool will be applied to both of them. But do we also want to deform Jordi? Yes! But do we do it in that shot? Nope. But when I deform the car, for example, move the rooftop down a little bit, I want Jordi to stick with that. So I'm simply adding some points to the car, which will automatically create this mesh for us, as well as keyframes. And now let's go to the impact and adjust, destroy our car accordingly. And as we have all of this in a big matte painting, we can now at a pretty final stage still art direct this and get different versions of the shot. So cool! Art directors will love this workflow. And depending on your shot you have now two options for motion blur. The first one is to simply enable motion blur, which could give you really great results. But yes you heard it, I said could. Because for example in the matte painting it makes sense that there is motion blur on the falling Jordi. But in our final comp as I have him centered in the shot I would normally see him sharp and the background would be motion blurred. As this is what mainly is moving in the shot. So for that you can use the pixel motion blur effect and play with the settings here. Those are the same as your motion blur settings for the comp that you can find in the comp settings over here. Hey, and this is also where I will end this tutorial, to not get an overkill of information out there. And if you have questions about this tutorial, about other ways to do it, about the workflow, or simply want to leave a comment, then now is the time. And while you're at it, please also leave a subscription over at the guys from Cinecom.net, because honestly, I spent a whole day with them, jumping through fake glass, crashing onto cars. Is there anything better to do in your free time? I don't think so. And if they and myself get enough new subscriptions, we may join forces once again in the future. 
But for now, I wish you a lot of fun jumping out of hey, your wind. Hey, stop! I wish you a lot of fun destroying stop. your... For now, I wish you a lot of fun in After Effects. 